At this place in history, we're in Manchester and we're at Hildeen, an executive director of the Vermont Historical Society. Steve Perkins is going to tell us more. I know, this is so cool. This is like a beautiful house on beautiful grounds. They've got goats, they've got trains, and they've got Abraham Lincoln's hat. So we're going to go check in uh, with Paula Maynard, uh, who is one of the really cool educators here, and learn all about it. So Hildeen, this is the Lincoln family home. Paula, how did the Lincolns come to be in Vermont? Oh, it's a very exciting story. Actually, during the Civil War in 1864, Mary Lincoln brought her son, her young son, Tad, and was met at the Equinox Hotel, which still stands today in Manchester, um, was met there by Robert Lincoln, their oldest son. Now, many people don't know this, but I'll insert here that of their four children, Robert Lincoln, the oldest, is, becomes the only one who survives to adulthood. He ended up being a successful attorney in Chicago. He also ended up with a law partner named Edward Isham. Edward Isham's family home was located right at the edge of this property where our exit road is. So Robert was coming back to visit and probably at that time looking at pieces of the land and thinking how can I put all this together. So we're fortunate that he decides this is the place where he's going to build his ancestral home to be a place where his uh, descendants would come to. And in fact, that's what happened for the three generations, 70 years, nobody but a Lincoln ever lived here, including the last three, what would be great grandchildren of Abraham and Mary. Peggy Beck with the girl, the one girl, lived in Vermont until she died. The two other, uh, there were two other boys. Now what we, most people are not aware of, the direct descendancy from Abraham and Mary Lincoln ended with those three children. So the legacy we have to protect, the family's history here, is we take it very seriously. But we are also profoundly aware that all of that really goes back to Abraham Lincoln. So all throughout the property, people are linked with not only Robert and his family's history, but the fact that it's Abraham Lincoln's values that everything that we do here is rooted in. So we have mm -hmm. the house, and then there's this brick square mm -hmm. out front. Can you tell me what yeah. that brick square is? It's probably the least expensive but most valuable thing we've ever done by putting the imprint of the footprint of the cabin that Abraham Lincoln was born in, in Kentucky in the front yard directly in front of the mansion that his son built in just one generation. I've heard mm -hmm. that you have one of Lincoln's top hats here. It has traveled a great deal. The last several years it's been to the LBJ Presidential Library, the Ronald Reagan Presidential Library, and prior to that, Disney. We're happy it's home for a while because it's nice in its case. It's the best preserved of the three in existence. The other two, one is in the Smithsonian, and the other is in the museum, in Springfield Museum, the Lincoln Museum. So we're very proud to have it in Little Old Vermont, and it's never really left Vermont except to go traveling. So now we've moved into the woods, and there's a gorgeous Pullman car right behind us. Why is that here? Well, you really can't tell the complete story of Robert Todd Lincoln unless you have a, a, have a Pullman car. Uh, and that's because he was president of the Pullman Palace Car Company when it was the largest manufacturing company in the world, and it also employed the most freed slaves and their descendants. Historically, uh, these trains were renovated over periods of time, so in its first iteration it was called the Ortega, and it was President McKinley's car. In the second iteration, which it is out here in 1903, it had to come off the line uh, while Robert was president for us to have this car here. This car did just that under the name Sunbeam and it took care of 18 people and they could ride, sleep, eat, uh, socialize, all within this one car so it would have had one porter and one chef. So it was the type of car that would have been used by a family or a group of executives. We choose at this uh, car and at this exhibit to tell the hundred years of history between Robert's father, Abraham Lincoln, and the Emancipation Proclamation and the March on Washington in 1963. So it's a quite a provocative exhibit, it's very popular, and it's the southernmost uh, stop on Vermont's African American Hairs Trail because of that story. So when can people visit this incredible place? They can visit every day, day of the year except five holidays between 9.30 and 4.30. At this place in history. 